presentation today, March 27, 2024, um, on learning from cured cases. And this is one in a series. Uh, we had some last fall, and we're going to have one a month for the next. This is the one of four. Okay, so let's just jump right in. And I want to say that I'm, as you can see, I have no assistant here. So uh, what I'd like to invite people to do is I will pause periodically and see if there are any questions. And if they are, please feel free to pop them in the chat. Okay. And I'll try and get everything covered. I'd like to spend an hour on the case and then leave 15, 20 minutes uh, at the end for you to ask any sort of general questions that you'd like to ask. Okay. So without further ado, welcome again. And here is our agenda for today. We're gonna to take a look just very briefly at who are these masters to whom I'm referring, um, from whom we are going to be taking our guidance uh, in these case analyses. We're gonna look at a case of eczema from Kent. Um, I've got a little sidebar uh, bonus repertory investigation on something I'm going to call early menses. You'll see in a, as that comes up. And then, as I said, we'll have an open Q&A. Okay, so let's jump into who are the masters. And of course, Samuel Hahnemann is our master homeopath. And I've just highlighted a couple of things here from aphorism 153. We all know this, but it never hurts to be reminded. And we're going to look at these from various angles from different um homeopathic teachers, if you will. The more striking, singular, uncommon, and peculiar or characteristic signs and symptoms are what we're looking at. And what Hahnemann goes on further to say here is the more general and undefined symptoms, loss of appetite, headache, debility, restless sleep, discomfort, and so forth, demand but little attention when of that vague and indefinite character. And don't we get a lot of that in our acute case taking? So just a reminder, we're not alone when we're frustrated with those symptoms. Now, let's take a look at, um, I'm just gonna highlight a couple things here from Kent because this is by way of review, we went over in some detail, some of Kent's guidance in an earlier uh, last fall series, and I'll get to that. So. Uh, just emphasizing here from Kent, the symptoms must be judged as to their value as characteristics in relation to the patient. They must be passed in review by the rational mind to determine those which are, and we emphasize again, strange, rare, and peculiar. Okay? Um, now, you know, I've really grown to love this lady. She has such a great sense of humor. humor. Margaret Tyler... <laughs> She says here, you've got to know your repertory from cover to cover if you are to have the best results and you've got to use it with brains and imagination. So I like that inspiration. We're gonna try and take that inspiration from Margaret Tyler here as we go forward. She's also part of the review. Um, so I'm gonna go over just a few of the highlights of, of uh, her recommendations. As she points out here, Pathological case taking will not help. Symptoms that go to make up the diagnosis we must have, but they will seldom lead to the curative drug. They may point to a group of remedies that might be useful, but they will not pick the one remedy demanded by the symptoms of this patient. Okay, sage advice. Now she's got four points that we're gonna look at here. She has sort of given us her hierarchy for grading the symptoms. So we're going to use this going forward. So of course, first would be if well-marked the mentals, right? Mental symptoms, grade number one. And second in grade, uh, Margaret Tyler suggests the general symptoms of the patient, okay? Uh, thirdly, in women, the menstrual state. Now this is interesting. Um, and we're going to get into this in some detail. As I said, there's a little sidebar about the menstrual state. And finally, uh, again, she tells us that the particulars, in other words, the symptoms that bulk so largely for the patient, this is the stuff they're calling to complain about when they have the flu or what have you, these symptoms are really of minor importance from our point of view. 
Do we want to tell the patient to go away and not talk about that stuff? No, we sort of listen and then we put them in our hierarchy going forward. So in conclusion, according to Margaret Tyler, the generals in their order, mental, climatic, she's talking about our mm, weather sensitivities, things like that, temperature modalities, food desires and aversion, all of which must be markedly present to be of any value, okay? Um, and then secondarily, the particulars of the complaint. So not the complaint itself, but the characteristic particulars of the patient's complaint. Now, I'm going to point you in the direction of, if you wanna go into some of, I think I did two cases on this one. Um, on this building repertory skills part one, it was back in September. And I'm going to show you if you go to, oh, you don't want to go there in my, <laughs> here are all the things I was doing in desperation and get in the meeting. Here we go. Radaropus.us. This is our main webpage for the Radar Opus North America folks. And when you click on training here, and if you go down to this one, free on-demand videos, um, we're going to do that now. You'll never find it unless you go in this little search box and what you're going to type in is skills. Okay. Oh, come on. Skill. How about that? Hmm. Oh, fine thing. Here we go. I had too many eyes in it. Okay. As soon as I put skill, you'll notice that um, I have a selection here and this is that first one, build repertory skills. And here's the second one. Why we have two named part two, I don't know, but there you go. Okay, so if you want to review um, the sage advice from either Kent, Margaret Tyler, and or a couple of great uh, cases that we did last fall, they're there in that video. So moving right along, I have brought forward a new uh, master for us. So this is Dr. Erastus Case. Sometimes you'll see him called E.E. E. Case. I did not know that he actually, um, he died in 1918 of pneumonia and influenza. So he must have not made it through that great influenza pandemic. But this guy was really, really, as it says here, worthily enjoyed the esteem and affection of his colleagues in this association, that being the International Hanumanian Association. He was a really, really fantastic uh, clinical uh, case taker and teacher. So let's take a look at um, just a few pointers from Dr. Case going forward. Um, I love this quote. He actually says here, some of you doubtless have worked out a case with a repertory and found that the symptoms led to not a single, but to several remedies. Oh, brother, have we ever. So then he asked the question, Shall we employ the remedy which covers the greatest number of symptoms, a purely numerical comparison, or can we select some special symptoms which have more weight than others in making the choice? Well, it's a rather rhetorical question, right? So let's look at Erastus Case's uh, rules or guidelines, if you will, for prioritizing, creating a hierarchy, and actually getting into um, finding the genius of the case. So his first rule, rule number one, is all things being equal, give preference to a mental symptom rather than to a bodily one. And rule number two, if there's no particular or peculiar mental symptom, use the most peculiar bodily one. Great advice, right? Now, uh, number three requires a little explanation, I think. So a common symptom by its concomitants may become characteristic. So let's see what he means by that. He gives us an example or an illustration here. So blah, blah, a carpenter age 61 has a cough for two weeks, dry, spasmodic at night from tickling in the throat. Worse while lying down, relieved if he stands up. The cough is so severe that the muscles of the throat, chest and abdomen are sore. Now, remember, we're looking for what he's calling concomitants. A dry, spasmodic cough at night is relieved by sitting up. Oh, and he says, pointed to the remedy. All right, so out of all of this, 
Erastus case gives us this as the key to the case. I'll tell you something, you study his cases, you are gonna learn a ton. Uh, so let us go ahead and see. Yep, dry spasmodic cough at night relieved by sitting up. So it's the concomitance or the confluence of the dry cough at night. And then of course the modality relieved by sitting up. Hayasayama's case. And we can actually look at that rubric um, and you can look it up even in your modern repertory. There are only four remedies in that rubric. Okay, so that was EE cases rule three. And finally, rule four, and we're going to look at this at the end of our case today, is in subsequent prescriptions, meaning those that uh, we give after the initial prescription or the initial remedy has acted. When the same remedy is not indicated, follow the latest symptoms which have appeared. Duh, we all know this, right? But I tell you, these are just such basic, simple rules. If we would apply them, we'll save ourselves a lot of headache. So let's get into today's case. And before we do, someone has chatted something. I'm going to have a peek. I can hear. Can I enlarge the pages? Oh, golly. Mary, if I do that, I'm going to lose my orientation over here. Um. Let me see if I can do a little some something here to make it like ever so a little bit bigger. I wonder if it'll do this. Can I zoom in? Oh, that's worse. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that means, no, I think that's as good as it's going to get. You guys will get a hand out of this or he'll make it available if you want. So you can look back at these. And, oh, it was on your phone. Yeah, well, you know what? My condolences. Got to get these on your on your laptop at least. Okay, so we're going to get into today's case of eczema from Dr. Kent. This is from 1910. Mrs. GFH, aged 42 years. Eczema of vesicular form. Vesicles filled with thin yellow fluid copious on inside of hands and fingers, lips cracked, has had stomach or intestinal trouble for years, constipation and diarrhea alternating. Patients generals, sensitive to heat, warm room, warm air, summer heat, perspires easily from exertion, warm room and walking, desires cold air, fond of open air, ameliorated walking in open air, Neck aching in the back. Just three pages here. Menstrual periods always too soon. Flow copious, sometimes clotted. And finally, we have a bucket load of food things. Craves quantities of rich candy and very rich cake. One sister is insane, eats much candy, and mother craves candy. Cannot eat strawberries or veal without diarrhea. Aggravated pork, tomatoes, sweets, pies, pudding, fresh bread, apples, bananas, pears, fats. Poor thing. And can eat peaches and oranges. Now, just given this, if we're in a hurry, did anybody want to speculate what you just want to give this, uh, this patient? Anybody want to throw it out there? She's aggravated by fats. Uh, she wants fresh air. She wants to walk outdoors. You know, when we're, ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Edie. We'll just want to give Pulsatilla, right? Makes sense. Yeah, everybody wants, we all want to give Pulsatilla, don't we? Beautiful. Um, yeah. So that's not the remedy, obviously, or why would we be here? <laughs> right? Um, no, the one thing I want to say about studying these cases is there's usually very little extraneous material. Um, they usually give you everything you need and not a lot of extra. I would say there's a bit of extra in this case, but generally speaking, you know, this is a very short little case from 1910. Not a lot of complicating, you know, poison sprays happening and, you know, glyphosate and all that stuff. Pretty straightforward. But we can rely on what we've been given by the author here to help us solve the case. 
So let's break it down. And this is where uh, we're going to get into the Radar Opus uh, program. Okay, so we're going to start right here with this very first part of the case, eczema of vesicular form, vesicles filled with thin yellow fluid, copious on insides of hands and fingers. Now, we looked at this idea that, well, we don't want to prescribe on the pathology. The pathological symptoms are not important if they are of an indistinct character. So eczema in and of itself is not particularly remarkable, right? It's happening all the time. But there are, I would argue that here we have some rather characteristic um, aspects of the eczema. Okay, we have it's a vesicular form. It has a thin yellow exudate. And where is the eczema? It's on our hands and fingers. Okay, so we actually narrow things down just a little bit. Now, before I bop on over to my radar opus, I want to look at my cheat sheet here and see what's coming up next. Ah, okay. Yeah, so actually, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide, and let me tell you what I did here, and then we're going to actually go do it. I just took all of the symptoms, irrespective of their character, just all of this first set of symptoms here, everything I could find, and I dumped it on a clipboard here in my radar opus. Okay, and you see what we've got. Let's go have a look. Uh, now at the program. Okay. So this is, oh, look at that. Good job, Marcy. We're actually looking at the correct clipboard. Now I have taken all of my symptoms. I'm using the latest version of the synthesis repertory. The Adonis is how I say it. And here I actually have the, happen to have those symptoms on this clipboard nine. So let's just take a look at what I took and then we can kind of apply our intelligence um, to the utility of some of these symptoms. Skin eruptions, eczema, useful or no? I would argue not so much because the next one we have here at least is vesicular eruptions as opposed to just eczema. So I kind of like the vesicular thing. Now, Here's the location of the eruptions on the fingers. Um, oh, golly, let's put the discharge. Well, eruptions discharging is kind of nice, isn't it? You know what I want to do, though? I want to move that down. Let me take the fingers and let me move it down. Now, if you don't know how to do this, I'm just going to right click and then it's going to say move rubric one line down there because I wanted all these to be together, the fingers and hands. So it's discharging. It's actually discharging with some characteristics here. Anyway, eruptions are on the fingers, vesicles on the hand, and vesicles on the fingers. Now, I would argue because we're looking at the vesicular eczema, we might not care so much about this gigantic rubric, eruptions on the fingers. We might be more interested in this one, vesicles on the hands, vesicles on the fingers. And then we have this quality of the discharge. So. Um, what I have taken the liberty of doing here is let's take a look at another version of this same clipboard. So you see, this is when you just throw it all in there and look what you get. Um, what's that expression? Garbage in, garbage out. You know, this is kind of what we expect, right? In terms of, um, possible remedies. Let's take a look at how I proposed to reorganize things here. Okay. So on clipboard number one, it looks very similar. But you'll notice that uh, some of, well, first of all, uh, let's go back to this one for a minute. This weighting, if you will, here, this form of the analysis that puts our remedies in a particular order, this is the sum of symptoms sorted by degrees. Okay, that's the analysis strategy that I use. It's the very first one here when I click on this uh, chess piece, sum of symptoms sorted degrees. What that means is, this number eight here, or seven in the case of graphitis, that gives us the number of symptoms in which that remedy appears. And the second number here is simply adding up the degrees, um, how strongly represented that remedy may be in any one of the rubrics, okay? So I use this as my general um, repertorization strategy. Now, 
you notice here I've got eight rubrics. That's right, eight rubrics. And I've only got a couple of, no, I've got three remedies here that cover all eight. Does that mean that, let's say, for example, mesarium or phosphorus might not be a possible remedy? Of course not. We're way, way uh, too soon to be jumping to a conclusion. But let's look at what I did here. So on clipboard number one, I actually did some prioritizing here. And we now have four rubrics represented, you see? And I've got a total of, oh my go gosh, all the way down to number 17 here. You see, mesarium has still represented in four of our rubrics. So which four are we actually considering now? What I did is I took this first one that was not characteristic at all, particularly. It's just a flat pathological rubric. And I what I did is do this by right clicking. I changed the intensity to a zero. It was a one. I changed it to a zero. I could have deleted it if I wanted. I could have gotten rid of it all together, but I thought I'll just leave it in here for the sake of discussion. So you can see how I do this. I can also do that. Watch what happens when I highlight the rubric. I don't have to do the right click. I could just type a zero on my keyboard and watch what happens. Now the vesicular eczema went, wow. The vesicular eruptions or vesicular eczema went away and look what happened to my analysis. Everything shifted. Okay, but I wanna put that one back. So I'll highlight it and I'll type a one, okay? So all I did here was I went through all of these rubrics that I just threw in there in a big pile. And I said, okay, I want this one. I don't want eruptions on fingers or eruptions discharging because I've got vesicles on fingers, vesicles on hands. I've got yellow and thin discharge. So I, I selected four out of all of this mess that I had. As I said, I could just as easily, in fact, let's do that for fun. Let's take these that we don't like. Oh, no, thin we... You know what I threw out? You know why I threw out thin? Because it's too small. Let's look at it. Okay. If I want to just choose from this group, then I'm good. But you know what? I don't. So I decided rubric too small, going to get rid of it at this stage of the game. So I will just, let's do this for fun. Let's get rid of them. Okay. Et voila. Okay. So far, so good. How are we doing? I don't see any. Now I've totally lost that control bar thing. Oh, well. I guess if somebody really needs me, they will speak up. Okay, so here's the case of eczema. Here is the that first clipboard. No waiting, no elimination. We just threw it all in the pot. Um. Let's go to the second symptom, if you will, which is basically stomach or intestinal trouble for years, right? Now, what characterizes this? She's got cracked lips and the alternating constipation and diarrhea. So same thing, I threw it all in onto a clipboard. Let's go have a look-see here. There is my second barrel of monkeys. I just threw everything in, irregardless of you know, is it characteristic? Is it not? Is it going to, is it characteristic of the patient and their digestive uh, distress? I just threw it all in there. And let's go back to our presentation. Here are the two clipboards together, unweighted, unedited, and it's just not particularly helpful, is it? Or is it? We don't know. It's a bit early yet. Um, but let's go back to what Erastus case said. Shall we employ a remedy which covers the greatest number of symptoms, a purely numerical comparison, or we can we select some special symptoms which have more weight than others in making the choice? Well, we've already answered that question. Let's remove the less characteristic symptoms. So here's a screenshot of where I did that with both of those clipboards. So we worked through this first one. You'll see that some of these are zeroed out. And then I did the same thing on that second clipboard, leaving us with nothing but cracked lips and diarrhea alternating constipation. I threw out the disordered stomach and the indigestion. Remember, those are just like, that's the stuff somebody calls to complain with, and we can't do much until we have found out the peculiar or particular expression of that symptom. 
Okay, so now I really want to see if anybody has any kind of a question. And as much as I ever complain about having that Zoom control bar, now when I need it, it's disappeared completely. View show floating meeting controls. There it is. Okay, good. No further chats going on, so we're good. We can carry we can carry on, right? Right. Good. Thank you for your patience. Okay. So, where are we? Well, it's I just want to like where are we? Okay, we got through the first page of our case. And we've got a couple of clipboards which we have organized with more characteristic symptoms for our case of eczema. Are we even close? Well, some of us just wanted to give pulsatilla like right away. <laughs> okay, but we are gonna forge through because obviously there's another solution to this problem. Okay, so this is the next page of our symptoms for the patient. Sensitive to heat, warm room, warm air, perspires easily, desires cold air, fond of open air. This is why we want to get pulsatella and just get it over with. Um, now, this notation that I put here, this is again from Margaret Tyler, second in grade after the mentals. Oh, I forgot to ask the question. We don't even have any mentals here, right? Right. So we just have to go with what we have. Um, and if you'll recall, what Margaret Tyler said is, no, that was a Rastus case. First, look at the mental, characteristic mentals. And right behind that, we can take the most characteristic generalities of the patient. Okay, this is Dr. Tyler's interpretation. Such general symptoms of the patient, the environment and all of that. Okay, these are the elements of that generality section that I felt might be useful. Okay. And I decided then to repertorize those, do the same thing I did on the other, which is just to dump everything in. We're kind of going through an exercise here so we can see how we, where <laughs> the holes we can fall into and how we're going to get out of them. Okay. So we have the sensitivity to all kinds of warm air, room, heat, the easy perspiration, and the desire for cold air. Let us have a look at um, where that's going to take us in the program. Okay. And I think I have all that on this clipboard right here. Yeah, here's the unweighted dump where I just threw everything in. I've got warm air, uh, generals, warm aggravates, warm room, warm air, becoming warm. Here's the easy perspiration with slight exertion and the desire for cold air. Now, how useful or not is this bin of symptoms? Let me see if I've got, yeah, I took a picture of that. I threw it up here for, the, obviously we know pulsatilla is at the top of the list, right? Again, we could just give pulsatilla and go home, but you know, we're probably not gonna solve our problems here, so. Let's remove the less characteristic symptoms and let's group others. So this will be a review for those who've forgotten how to do the grouping, okay? So here's what I mean. I take a look at this bucket of symptoms and I say, you know, warm room, I'm sorry, warmth aggravates, warm room, warm air, and warm becoming. This is all basically the same symptom. So I really don't want that to be so terribly overrepresented. How did I select those one at a time? Okay, on my Mac, I'm gonna use the command key. I'm gonna put my finger on there and I'm gonna hold my finger down while I click on the various rubrics as I select them. If I keep my finger on them and I click again, the rubric goes off. So it's toggle on, toggle off. And P PC users, you also have a key and I don't recall, I think it's the second one over from the space bar but you can experiment around with the toggling business so that you can select multiple rubrics. Let's right click and let's choose group or combine, okay? And what we wanna do with the grouping or combining, I like to, I see somebody's chatted, I'll get right to you. With all the remedies combined, so this is the way I will normally make a, a grouped 
rubric. I will combine them all by selecting a small letter of the alphabet from the list, and I will say combine. Watch what happens. Notice that now there's a small letter M here in front of these. Oh, that's interesting. Look what it did to my analysis. It flipped things a little, didn't it? And the program is now actually looking at all four of these as though they were one rubric. Remember how we looked at some of the symptoms? Um, pulsatilla, for example, now only appears in three rubrics. This is considered one, two, and three. Same thing for iodum, for sulfur, for kalisulf. Um, tuberculinum also appears in three. Why? Because it's got, it's here in this first warm rubric and then the perspiration and desire for cold air and so on and so forth. So this is the way I um, do my combining. Now I will tell you that for this particular case, I also decided that this whole business was not particularly characteristic of the patient. Like if I had to choose like, what am I more likely to hear from a patient? This is very common, worse from warm air, right? Um, it's less common that they sweat with slight exertion. And it's also less common, more characteristic, this is just my way of thinking, that they would have a desire for cold air. So you know what I did? I took all four of these, even after I grouped them together and I just zeroed them out. I said, okay, I don't even care. Because what I really characterize the patient is the easy sweating and the desire for cold air, okay? Now, I actually have all of that homework already done up here on clipboard number three. Yeah, see how I grouped them together? I zeroed them out. Oh, and I furthermore actually gave two underlines to the desire for cold air. I thought, you know, that's kind of cool and it's also a small rubric. So all I did is I highlighted it and I typed the number two and I got two underlines. Now, let's see what somebody had to say. Oh, P had, PC has the control key. Beautiful. Um, Group A to Z, then crossing. No, 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 no. Okay, Julie, very good. Um, let's uh, let's cover that really quickly. So I'm going to take all these four again. I'm going to select one. I'm holding the command key. I've selected all four. Right click. When you choose group or combine rubrics here, this whole business down at the bottom where it says combine, ignore, ignore for now. Okay, we are only going to work with this upper area. We are going to add the selected symptoms to a group and we are going to choose a small letter from this first group. Okay, that's all I'm going to say on the subject right now. Um, in this case, those are all, uh, for some reason, it looks like it already the letter E got selected and I'm just going to do the combining. I have a number of reasons why I like to do it this way. Part of it is they don't disappear. You can still see what's going on. You can always ungroup them if you need to later. So we can talk about that. That's talked about a lot in different sessions, but we want to get to the core of this case. So, and I'm going to have to talk really fast. Now, this one, quite honestly, since I've duplicated it, I'm just going to select all and I'm going to zero it all out. So that clipboard over here doesn't really matter. In fact, neither one of these do anymore. I'm just going to zero out. You guys don't need to know what I'm doing here, but basically I have my whole case up here on this first I don't know, seven clipboards or something. These down here were some little extra scratch pad I was doing. All right, let's go back to our analysis. Um, let's remove the less characteristic symptoms of groups. Here's a screenshot of what I did. You can see that some of these are grouped. They're zeroed out. Um, oh, I don't know why I had to walk in and open air ameliorate. I think I changed my mind and threw it away. But anywho, uh, that's that. Let us continue. So are we anywhere close to being there now? Let's take a look. Um, I'm gonna look at clipboard one. That's our, uh, oh, remember I, I shortened that up a little bit. That's clipboard one. There's our indigestion. So we have the eczema, we have the indigestion and then we have the generalities. Are we getting close? Well, pulsatilla is still up here in the running, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, are we ready to pull the trigger? Not quite, because um, we've got more symptoms. And again, the patient will give you more symptoms if we need them, and also the teacher, in this case, Dr. Kent. Now, next bit is neck aching in the back. Honestly, people, 
I did not know what to do with that. I thought, I don't know, there's not enough to tell me anything. So I think that's thrown in there just like as a a distraction. I'm going to call it a distraction. I'm going to say if all they can say about it is I'm aching at the back of my neck or my back is aching in the neck. Uh, okay. Next. Now, here's where we want to have our little uh, look at the menstrual cycle. Okay. Actually, we're doing okay on time, I'm noticing. Um, the prescriber reports. Menstrual periods always too soon. Flow copious, sometimes clotted. Okay, here's where we're going to go to the repertory and we're going to have a little exploration. So I this is what I did and I made this what I thought was just an interesting discovery that I want to share with all of you. Let's go to the repertory. And this is what I did. I said, okay, female. I started typing, whoops, female, got my navigation window, and I said, menses, early, too early. I said, oh, that sounds pretty good. Let's go there. Menses, too early. Okay, nice, juicy rubric. Um, let's go ahead and use this very last clipboard down here, uh, clipboard 12. Let's just drag that over. Okay, and but let's take a look further. Look. Oh, they've given me a cross-reference here. It says too frequent. Okay. I said to myself, well, I, better, I guess I better go look at that because what's the difference between too early and too frequent? Remember what the prescriber said was menstrual periods always too soon. What the heck is going on? Okay. So I said, well, let me go look at too frequent. Now this one's got 236 remedies. This one has got 335. And it's also got some clarifying information or synonyms, if you will. Menses too frequent in this repertory is also clarified as being early, too early in the regular menstrual cycle or premature in the regular menstrual cycle. So I said to myself, that's more like what they have, isn't it? Okay. So anywho, I took this one. Let's just put it down here right now. And let's take a look at this idea of being premature. So I said, all right, let's go back to our navigation window. I just hit the delete key. Once I'm in the chapter, usually if you hit the delete key or backspace, it'll take you back to that navigation window. And I'm going to go menses premature, enter, premature in the regular menstrual cycle. And you know what? They are referring me to, to frequent. They're not referring me to too early. Yeah, just what we thought, right? So what's going on here? Here are the two rubrics. Um, they're both gigantic, aren't they? And I just was having a really tough time understanding why I would use one over the other. Well, I got to thinking, and I'm going to go back to the repertory here so we can take a, a look at this. Now, with the particular version of the program that I have, I've got this repertory views setting up here. It's really handy because what it allows me to do, so I've got full repertory, which means I'm looking at the most modern and full version of the repertory. If I want to dial it back, say, let's go back to Kent's day. Okay, where's Kent's day? Uh, here's Kent, Kent's repertory. It's very similar to the book that Kent was working with. And look, here is the rubric that Kent would have used, right? It's much smaller. It's only got 161 remedies. And thankfully, they've still given us our, our little cross-reference here. So let's go and look at too early. So in Kent's day, this rubric did not even exist. Isn't that something? This is the rubric that Kent was working with. Menses too frequent, meaning too early in the menstrual cycle. And I think that that's what the patient had. So this rubric right here is the one I want. Okay, let's look at that clipboard again. Now, when we have repertory views, 
and I changed repertory. Remember, full repertory is what I was looking at when I was in the book. But that also translates over here to the analysis window. And so I'm still looking at the full repertory. I've got all the, both those rubrics full to the brim. But if I select Kent's repertory view, Mincy's too early just kind of falls out. And Mincy's too frequent has 161 remedies. Interesting, isn't it? Now, what if I were to take, remember I'm set up on Kent's repertory. Let's go with Kent's repertory. Let's throw in the eczema. See what I did? I, I, I'm actually pressing and holding the command key again so that I can select multiple clipboards. So I'm looking at, there's the vesicular eczema. There's my stomach stuff. There are those generals, warm and cold. Um, the analysis looks a little bit different when I have dialed back um, my repertory view to an earlier time and to Kent's repertory. So I wanted us to have a look at this because when we have female patients come in and we I don't know about you guys, I was really not knowing which rubric to use. We may want to consider um, carefully what we're doing. And then we have that premature um, rubric as well, which has got nothing in it. Okay, so let me see, do we have a question? Uh, Pulsatilla has slipped much further back on. Poor Pulsatilla. Boy, thank goodness we didn't just like um, shoot from the hip, isn't it? Of course, we all shoot from the hip. Where did Pulsatilla go, Edie? Oh my gosh, it's all the way over here now. Yeah. Well, sulfur just can't get out of the running though. And that's to be expected. Okay, so we better get back to uh, where we were. So that's your sidebar with regards to menstrual periods. And remember, um, okay, so here's a screenshot. So when you get these, you know, you can look at this stuff. Mincy's too early. And you see that this is the full repertory view. Um, this did not even exist in Kent's day. This is the one that Kent's day uh, was existing, but it was actually like this. It only had 161 remedies, okay? So if you've got the patient and you just are using polycrest remedies and they've got this issue, that's probably your best bet, right? And if you don't have the repertory views, you've probably got a version of Kent's repertory in your software. Let's have a look. So if I go to repertories, I've got Kent right here, English Kent. Let's go do, let's go look. Okay, uh, female, uh, menses, uh frequent. Too early, too soon. Yeah, there it is. So if you didn't have the repertory views, you could pull up Kent and do that sort of thing. Okay, that would be a perfectly lovely way to solve that problem without having repertory views. Okay, uh, so let's get back to it here. So where are we? Okay, so we got that sidebar out of the way. Oh, I really went in on it, didn't I? <laughs> Margaret Tyler, remember she said that this is really important in women, the menstrual state. So you can read up on that. Now she does point out here that the import, the most characteristic menstrual state uh, symptoms would be general aggravations before, during, and after the menses. That's not what this patient has, but they do have, although she says of lower rank, menses early, late, and excessive. And this last, of course, only when there is nothing such as a polyp fibroid or menopause to account for it. Well, that's the case. We really don't have any other account for the fact that her menses are coming late. So, you know, we're kind of in the clear with using that, that rubric, right? Okay, so let us carry on. Oh, so here we go. I threw everything together. Too early, too frequent, too copious, too clotted. Useless, right? Useless. And then I adjusted. So down here, you'll see, it looks like it's on clipboard four. Let's look at it. I made the adjustments and, um, oh, wait, let me take it out of Kent. Let me go back to the full repertory. So by, I just zeroed out early because I said, I don't want to use that. And I also threw out clotted and copious. I just said, let me just use the too frequent. Okay. Yeah, they're copious. Yeah, they're clotted. Um, Maybe they could be in there. I I chose, I'm trying to 
use the most characteristic symptoms that I can. Okay. Uh, so are we there yet? Well, there are more symptoms yet. So we've got to keep going. We have to plug through all of it. Um, so here the thing is, we're down to the food desires. And we want the aversions and aggravations from food. And we want the strongly marked ones. So I had to ask myself, why do I care if her sister is insane and eats much candy and her mother eats candy? What's the big deal? Obviously, Kent is trying to tell us here that the desire sweets is a big deal for this patient. Otherwise, he wouldn't put that in there. And so sometimes we'll find this. You know, the parent is talking about their kid and they say, yeah, you know, they just love sweets. And then you find out, you know, my grandmother had a problem with that. And everybody's diabetic. You know, that makes it, that can be the strong marking. Okay. And then we got all this stuff they can't eat. And then they can eat peaches and oranges. Okay. So I highlighted this strongly marked craves quantities of rich candy and very rich cake. Um, and then, <laughs> Unweighted list. Let's look at it, folks. This is where we get into all kinds of trouble, right? I dumped everything in there. And look at this. Of course, sulfur's at the top. There's our pulsatilla. Now, I furthermore, you'll notice that these are sorted by the size of the rubric. Okay. How do we do that? We right click, we choose sort, and we have different options here. And I just chose descending rubric size. I do this sometimes because I, I say, you know, do I really care if veal or pork, you know, these rubrics are so small, they're not going to decide anything. Of course, they make a great argument for um, pulsatilla, right? Um, wait a minute. Pears aggravate. Wait a minute. What did he say? Oh, that was peaches. Never mind. Okay. Uh, okay, so I dumped it all in there, and what do we get? We get a big soup. Did that help? I even tried grouping everything together. I put the sweets all together, and I gave them a three. I gave them three underlines. Um, I left the fat aggravates in here, and I I doubled the pork. I put the porks together in a group. Um, I put the veals together in a group. It really didn't change much, did it? Um. Okay, so let's go to our repertorization now. So this is the clipboard, which I then modified. Here's the modified one where I grouped everything together. You know, sometimes these don't stay next to each other when you move in and out of the program. It's kind of annoying. See how this part of the puddings and sweets is down here now, group D, and I want it up there. If I just right click and go move rubric, oh, if I move it to the first position, It'll be up there next to those. And same thing here. I can move rubric to the first position. Yeah, now all my Ds are together. Okay. Anyway, you get the idea. The point is, did this really help us much? I would argue not. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and let's look at our case now. We have the eczema. Uh, we have the indigestion. We have the general temperature stuff. We have the menses. Now I'm going to have to shrink this. You know, rather than shrink it down, I can also just collapse these clipboards so that we can still see what's happening up here. We know those clipboards are there. So let's go to clipboard three, four. How about clipboard five is the one. Yeah, five is the one that I doctored up. In other words, I, I did my prioritizing here with the food desires and aversions. Um, yeah, and let's leave it at that. Now, the intelligent person, we've got everything. We've got everything. And what have we got here? We've got kind of a mess. We've got a lot of polycrests. So, you know, in the flavor of, I think it was Erastus case that, you know, you still got a lot of numeric. We've thrown a lot of stuff at this case. And we really, what are we going to do? So, Here's where the modern computerized repertory really comes in handy. One thing we could do, and this is cheating by the way, but we're gonna cheat first and then we'll come back and do it the old fashioned way. So if I go over, remember my analysis strategies here and I said, I like this sum of symptoms sort of degrees. Okay, um, let me zoom out 
I'm just going to make this so that it all fits on the screen, kind of. I've got clipboards one through five all displayed. There are my remedy results. Let's try this thing called small remedies. Okay, what is that going to do? It's going to push forward or give more emphasis to remedies that are not so well represented. That's why they're called. Are they really a small remedy? Not necessarily by any means. We just, they are not as well represented in the repertories. And lo and behold, um, well, let me see. Now I'm gonna, actually going to make it bigger again so you can kind of see what's there. But it brings up some interesting ideas. Uh, it brings up Kali Sulf right here to the top of the, and look at that. So we wouldn't have found that, but we wouldn't even necessarily have thought of Kali Sulf, except for the fact that we 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 went with this small remedies thing. Um, we've got remedies like antimonium crudum coming up. Even Kali Arsenicosa looks interesting, doesn't it? What's happening with the minces here? The frequent min. Look at cyclamen. Who knew? Cyclamen covers the vesicular eruptions, the eruptions on the fingers. So what are we going to do? Well, let's go back to the case. Let's go back to the case. We tried small remedies. This is what we got. That was a that was a cheat um, since we're trying to learn from the old guys and do it the old fashioned way. So I had to ask myself this thing at the beginning. Why do I care if she can eat peaches and oranges? Like. He knew to ask that, right? Isn't that what's called like know the, oh, characteristic of patient and knowledge of repertory. Like this guy really knew his stuff. So he knew enough to ask if she could eat peaches and oranges. And here is, here are the two, those two rubrics. Oranges aggravate. Now he said she can eat them. Okay, so does this apply to our patient? No. Oranges aggravate. Um, and peaches aggravate. So would we consider giving this patient, given everything we have, would we want to give them calcarea? Would we want to give them pulsatilla? Right? Would we want to give them uh, serinum even or veratrum? According to the information from our faithful teacher here, she can eat peaches and oranges. She has no problem with them. So None of these remedies are going to help us out with this patient. Let's go look at those in the repertory, okay? I think I have them here. Oh, no, that's not them. Where did they go? Here they are. Okay. So here's oranges aggravate. See? And here's the peaches aggravate. There the two of them are. Now, I don't do this very often, but I thought you all would really enjoy seeing what happens. First of all, I'm going to group them together, okay? Because they really belong together. These are, um, we would not give any of these remedies to our patient, either one of them. So we're going to, uh, we're going to group them together. These are the ones that they're no way going to take. We're going to group or combine them and let's choose something we haven't used before, like Q, okay? So now they're grouped together. And what we're going to do is we're going to select this combined rubric. Again, these are the rubrics that, these are the remedies that no way are we going to give to our patient. Am I still on? Oh, look, I'm still on the small remedies. Let's go back to some of the symptoms analysis. There we go. Okay. Neither one of the, none of these remedies up here do we want to give our patient. Is there a way that we can set that up as a filter? Why, yes, there is. So remember how to do the filtering? It's here under change qualification. Now, normally we would want to choose, we'll either have a normal rubric, which is nothing, or we'll have an eliminative. We'll say the remedy must be in this group. But what we want is this one exclusive saying the remedy may not be in this group. Now watch what happens. It turned them red. It says the remedy may not be there. Now, if I take that clipboard, there's the food issue uh, with our eczema, with our indigestion, with our temperature modalities, 
with our menstrual issues. Now, mind you, Edie, what happened to our pulsatilla? Ha, ha, ha. She disappeared, didn't she? Pulsatilla disappeared, right? As soon as we took the information from Dr. Kent that uh, the patient cannot tolerate oranges. So we got one, two, three, four. Clipboard five is the all the other food stuff, right? And that's our case. Now, anyone want to venture a guess of what was, <laughs> yeah, all gone. Yeah, so anyone want to venture a guess then as to the remedy that was given in this case? Tip, it was not sulfur. <laughs> okay, tip, it was not sulfur. Oh, come on, you guys. Live a little. Ah, okay, someone's being brave. Yeah, I like the Kali Sulf. Oh, ED. You know, we did the, after I did this, Nat Muir, okay. Good thought, Julie, like that. Okay, so here's the reveal, okay? Actually, I'm gonna give you, here's the reveal, people. <laughs> Where's our, there it is. Okay, so let's get back to this presentation because we wanna see what happens with the prescription. All right, here's the full case. It's a Kali self case. Now, I will tell you, I reorganized these symptoms a little bit. Only, I didn't leave anything out. I just reorganized them because I thought it would be easier for us to kind of parse through them. Um, okay, so let's see what happens. It's a Kali self case. And I will already tell you, we are not going to talk about the potency because that's a whole other subject here. Um, so she gets Kali self. Uh, let's see. Kali Sulf 10M. Okay, that's not our 10Ms, by the way. We can talk about that another time. She gets Kali Sulf 10M on what date? June 13. So by June 29, two weeks later, blisters are about gone. Cracked lips improved, erectations empty, ameliorates. So the question is, what is the prescription? Now you remember back, we said, um, what did Erastus Case say about um, whoop, here he is. In subsequent prescriptions, when the same remedy is not indicated, follow the latest symptoms which have appeared. So I ask you, um, let's go, but where were we here? Okay. Have any symptoms appeared? No. Right? So he gives Sacklock. Okay. So after two weeks, a lot of improvement, he gives Sacklock. Now, two more weeks later, blisters entirely gone, erectations though somewhat improved. Now she's got, is this a new symptom? Sore sensation, constipation aggravates, her sleep is poor. So do we give her something? Yes. Do we give a new remedy? No. He repeats, same potency. Okay, now we go all the way to October. This is beautiful. Look at that. Has felt well since last report. Now, nervous ache at base of brain. That's new, right? Erectations. Now, do we need to retake the entire case? Nope. Here's what Dr. Kent did. He just went up at that point because it's been like two months or something, right? Okay. And now another month goes by rectum bleeding two weeks ago. Not now. Okay. So she had an aggravation of some old, probably an old symptom, came back. Eczema starts to come back on the finger. She's getting vertigo. Oh my gosh, we got to do something. Itching resembling rust poison, blah, blah, blah. Okay, who thinks we need a new remedy? No one. Ha, he just repeats the 50M. Oh, did someone say they thought we needed a new remedy? <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> okay, very good. So, okay, where was I? So. Yeah, he gives Kali Sulf 50M because she's starting to slide backwards, but we don't really have a new symptom picture just yet, do we? So let's carry on. By December, we have abdomen, a weighty burning sensation, stomach disturbed by Christmas dinner. Okay, vertigo with ache and vertex. 
he went to a CM. Now, again, these are those pinky potencies. So we have, you know, you got to do your research to understand what that stuff is. After he gave the CM of Kali Salt, no further treatment needed. Okay. That is what I have for you today. Um, I am going to take some questions as long as people want to stick around. Um, but I have thank you for attending here on the screen. We've seen our website at radaropus.us. You can get a hold of support there. And I also want to say if you are interested in one-on-ones or small group stuff with me, uh, Marcy Mearns, that's me, um, I do those as well. And I have a discount for Radar Opus people. So, yeah. Okay, here's a question. Rachel, you made the Desires Cold Air rubric as a two instead of a one. And I said it was because it was a small rubric, yet er, you're right. Oh, Rachel, you caught me. So what, what Rachel says here is, earlier I deleted something because it was a small rubric. Um, can I help you understand how to deal with small rubrics? <laughs> you know, I don't know if any of you ever heard Jeremy Share say, you know, what's the right rubric? And he would say, it's the rubric that has the remedy you need to give. Um, that's a sort of a snippy way of saying there's no correct answer to that question. How would I, let's see where, where that small rubric is that I eliminated. I think it was on this one. Yes, it was skin. Let's, let's bring these all back with a one. I eliminated skin eruptions discharging thin. In part, the reason that I eliminated that, in part because it's small, um, and I didn't feel like it sufficiently characterized this part of the complaint. Um, if there had been, if I could have found one that said watery discharges, for example, um, I might have been more inclined to use it. He didn't say they were glutinous because this is a really nice one. Well, again, it's kind of small. Um, so in this case, I said, you know, this is not going to take me anywhere. But the yellow is a nicer sized, still small rubric, but it's getting closer to the size that I personally like to use when I'm trying to narrow the field, yet guarantee that my remedy is included. And that's somewhere between 50 and 100 remedies in the rubric. So I don't know if that answers your question exactly. I I guess let's let's take a look at the, the clipboard where I overemphasize, or you should say I gave a two to the desire for cold air. You know, it's one, I think what it was, my thinking was this. It's one thing to be bothered by cold. I'm sorry, by warm air, warm, warm air, closed rooms and stuff. But it's quite another to say, I want some cold air. So in the same way that, um, let's look at the food situation. What did I say about the food? This one right here. I felt that that was more peculiar to the patient than the fact that they were affected by warm air. So if you took 100 people, you know, 50 of them don't like uh, warm air, but probably only five or 10 really want uh, warm air. I'm sorry, cold air. By the same token of 100 people that have eczema, um, if it's an itchy eczema, you know, I don't have that many eczema cases, but you know, maybe 35 of them have thin weepy stuff. Um, other ones have other characteristics. So I just took the yellow as being more important. And I hope that hope that makes some sense. It is a bit of a a, a creative process here. Um, other questions. I wish I, I you know, I thought it was going to be set up so that you guys could um would actually unmute yourselves, but I don't exactly know how to make that happen. Um, let me see. So additional questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat, if you will. And a 
<laughs> oh, Rachel says, is that my normal process, throwing everything in and then refining it from there? You know, Rachel, um, it's not always my normal process, but so, but I do often do that. I do often do that. It kind of depends on how much of a hurry I'm in. Um, I did it in this instance, partly because I wanted to make a point. I wanted to, for all of us to experience what happens when you throw things in without um, doing what's been suggested by our master teachers, which is to think critically and how characteristic are the symptoms. So I personally, um, you know, if it's a fever, I have got certain, let's just say a fever case, for example, and I have a fever presentation that's going to be coming up Um in an event that's going to be announced soon, since I don't know if it's been announced, I'm not going to say, but let's say I have four or five rubrics that I will, you know, are they sweating or not? Are they thirsty or not? Um, you know, what's the chill versus heat? Those general kinds of uh, symptoms I will always throw in, even though they may not decide the, the remedy, they are going to help us focus in a certain direction. Um, now, okay, so the date for the next session, did I put that in there? Oh, it's right here. Next session, April 24th. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. I thought I had put that somewhere. So it's like, you know, in a month, it's the same time of day and everything. Um, and Julie's comment here, it's interesting because you have teachers who say, get the main thing about the main thing, but you also like uh, Dr. Tyler's main things. Um, okay. Yeah. I recommend, you know, you got to do a lot of reading. You got to do a lot of studying. I have studied so many of these old cases and I just try, I guess that's the bottom line. I want to take the case as though I know nothing and try and model how on earth I could have come up with that same prescription, knowing what I know. And that's where the learning is. Um, Rachel, this is a great question about the numbers one can choose on the intensity of the rubric. Do I ever go above a three? You bet you I do. And I'm going to show you an example of that right now. So um, let's take, um, let me see which one of these might be useful. No, let's try this one. Okay. My cat is has had enough, I think, of the presentation. Well, well let's go to this one. Um, Let's say I for sure, uh, I'm looking just at the thin discharges from the vesicular eruptions. Okay, this last symptom right here, let's take a look at it in the repertory. There are 10 remedies there and I'm here. Whoops, where did it go? Oh, for goodness sake. Come on, Marcy, there you go. Ay, ay, ay. Ah, there it is. Okay, I'm on clipboard nine. Okay, good. So you see that I see the first three and then I look over here and I go, oh, petroleum, that's interesting. Serinum. Let me just for a moment, and I do this very, very often, I'll say, let me shove all of the thin discharging remedies to the top of my, to the top of the pile. So I will highlight the remedy and I will press a nine and watch what happens. So I'm giving nine underlines. And now all of a sudden, every remedy that is in that rubric has jumped up to the top of the list, right? They're all there. So I can look at them and I can compare how those remedies, some of them very small, compare with some of the polycrests that I'm also looking at. And then I can, you know, I can give it a five, see what happens with the five. It's going to bring them up if they're still there, aren't they? And so maybe I say, you know, I don't really care. Let me just give them a zero. Let me get rid of them all together. So I'll give a zero. Does it change things all that much? No. Okay. I hope that answers your question. I find that function extremely useful. Um, again, because all we're trying to do is give ourselves a way to look in to this large pool of symptoms that we have selected. I would probably, quite honestly, again, as I said, this gets a zero. Um, the eruptions, I'm going to zero these out, okay? Um, 
and even the discharging eruption. So that's very common to eczema. I'm going to zero all those out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the that even the vesicular eruptions I'm going to get rid of. All I care about are the vesicles on the fingers and the hands. I'm going to group them because I don't want to overemphasize one over the other. So I'm going to group them. This is the kind of stuff I do just, you know, till the cows come home. Hopefully I select one that hasn't been used and, um, you know, I know what remedy I'm looking for here. I want my Kali self. Where did it go? Oh, you know what? It's not in the thin. So I'll zero it out, but I really like the yellow. So at this point, all I've got are vesicles on the hands and fingers, and I'll give myself a two for a yellow discharge. That's the whole thing. And how many remedies do I have that cover that? Okay, I'm going to take these vesicles and the discharging yellow. Those are the only ones that even are counting here right now in this repertorization. I'm going to right click and I'm going to change the qualification to eliminative. In other words, those rubrics, just those three have now become a filter. And anything that does not appear in those rubrics basically falls off the map. And I'm now down to just 26 remedies in consideration here, if I want it to be that strict. That's kind of more the way I work, but again, I wanted to give us the benefit of kind of seeing the case the way Kent laid it out for us. Um, oh, I'm so happy to be here. And uh, yeah, I really hope that you guys will um, take advantage of these. They're sort of the third or the fourth um, Wednesday or whatever this this one is. I tried to get them all kind of one at a time. And, you know, do reach out to me. Most of you know how to get a hold of me. If you don't, you can always go through the Radar Opus uh, orders ordering team, or you can get me here on my website, Marcy Mearns. Yeah, let me know what you think, if there are things you'd like to cover. And um, yeah, with that, I'll say thank you and goodbye for now. And um, yeah. All be well and hope to see you all next time. Okay. Take good care. Bye bye. Edie Pfeiffer raised a hand. What do you have to say for yourself, Edie? <laughs> I can't. Okay. Bye, everybody.